Hello everybody, welcome to my channel, Newsboy Audio. I've been working on some gear here and uh, went on the auctions to look for a new DAC. I want to replace my current DAC in my office because I have a few, few power amps bullet behind me. One of them is an NAD and I want to use it in the uh, bedroom. But I don't have a preamp for it and I don't have a DAC. Uh, so I went out and I bought a DAC, but the DAC that I bought doesn't have a preamp. Luckily, uh, in my office, I have a Wilson 10 R8, which is an amazing amplifier. I have not come out with a review yet for it. Highly recommend it, and it has a preamp on it. Uh, and the DAC that I had inside my office was this Gustard. And as you can see, it has a preamp, because you can tell it's got the volume control right there. Uh, Gustard is a Chinese manufacturer of DAX. I bought this used on the used market about four years ago. I paid around 600, 700 US dollars for it at the time. It was, uh, I think, three or four years old at the time. And they shipped it to me and it worked great. And I really enjoyed it. And I wanted to come out with a review on it. But first, I wanted to show you, show you guys and you girls how to review some used audio equipment, how to inspect used audio equipment so that you, when you're changing your gear, especially in this vintage market, you can check to make sure it's not going to fail on you. This is important because sometimes when gear fails, it goes out with a bang. Uh, it sends a signal or something down the path and it can blow your speakers or your amplifier or your other gear. So this is important when buying new gear, when buying vintage audio gear, when buying vintage electronics. Um, and what we're going to do is a visual inspection. Now before I start, I want to warn you, working on old vintage electronics can be dangerous. These things hold a charge for up to 24 hours to 48 hours. The charge is easily enough to kill some people. And what you need to be careful of is large capacitors and some of the tubes. Um, large capacitors can hold charges for a long time. Um, and they, when they, if you touch them while they have a charge, they will electrocute you. If that electricity goes through your, your heart, it could kill you. Um, so there's a few things that you need to do. First of all, it's a good idea to let the, sit, the gear sit for 24 to 48 hours, 48 hours just to be sure. If you have a meter, you can check the gear to make sure it's decharged. Most working gear will decharge immediately or very quickly if it's working, but if it's not working 100%, it may hold a charge for up to two days, like I said. So first of all, I warn you, this is under your own risk, perform these at your own risk. Second thing, wait 48 hours if possible. If not, don't touch anything. Don't touch any of the electric components. Don't touch any of the circuit board. Don't touch any of the wiring within. All you are going to do during this inspection is look at the gear. Uh, you're not touching. Keep your hands behind you if you have to. Put them behind you. Um, but don't touch any of the electronics inside. Uh, just to be safe. If you want, you can use a grounding strap on your hand. And the purpose of the grounding strap is that if you do touch something that has electricity, that the electricity takes the quickest and shortest path to ground, uh, which hopefully is not your heart. So if you ground both hands and arms, it will travel from your finger to the ground strap down to the ground. Uh, that is just some basic safety advice. I recommend researching more on your own. Uh, go to some repair cafes or go to some uh, you know, experts if you are very unsure of yourself. I have trembly hands, I have a tremor. And so some days I don't work on electronics because my tremor is too much. It's 
one of the reasons I'm not doing this full time as a, a, a job. Um, I was grow, grew up around this stuff and my father's an electrical engineer and he taught me quite a bit about safety on these things. Uh, but I don't screw around with it when I'm shaking or I'm not feeling well and I'm not 100%. Um, in contrast, I'm a software developer, so I generally can do get away very well. Now, this Custard app is a very good example of what I find in the Chinese markets, especially in the high end. This is a, it looks like a one eighth sheet of aluminum, um, very heavy, very heavy duty, beautiful construction. Uh, you don't find this stuff in the American made DAX unless you're spending a lot more money. That's what's great about these Chinese brands is they're very, very inexpensive. Now what we did was we took off the cover and we're not touching anything. And here we can show you right here are the capacitors that we're afraid of. Um, and these are our focal points of our inspections. Uh, they're these large cylinder type applications. They stick from the board about one inch and they store electric charges and release electric charges. They can also filter signals, filter frequencies and do things like that. Uh, they even out AC current um, and they can even out waves. So if the electricity ha is in a wave that's dropping and up, has drops and ups like AC does or other current, uh, I can smooth it out and prepare it for later on. So these large caps are almost certainly in the power supply and they uh, are indicative of a very good device. These black and gold ones are called Nikon, or Nike, forgive me, I'm probably pronouncing it Nikon. Um, I'm probably pronouncing the company wrong. They're very high quality cap. These are gold quality caps. I've purchased these in the past to re do repairs. And it's a good indication of a high quality amplifier if you have these types of capacitor, these black and gold ones in here. Uh, in addition, they have two of these giant transformers in here, uh, which gives it all of its weight and is where the majority of the cost is in manufacturing these things. Again, a high quality amplifier has large uh, transformers and toroidal transformers are more efficient than regular, the square transformers, but can be a little harder to manufacture. Uh, they're preferred in the audio industry, and I see them quite a bit. So here's a deck. It looks spotless, actually. I expected more dusk. As I said, I never touch this. And I go through, and the first thing I want to pay attention to is these capacitors. I'm not touching them. I'm just giving a visual look. There are image online of capacitors failing. And I ex it, you should go and look at them. There's two types of substances that you will find on these capacitors and around them. Uh, one is glue, that's normal. The other is electrolytic uh, liquid that is leaking outside of the capacitor. Uh, it could be on the board, around the base, but they often appear way up at the top of these capacitors because that's where it comes out. And that's what you're really looking for. So each one of these electrolytical capacitors, there is some dust in here, I'm amazed. Uh, each one of these should be clean on the top. And if not, look at pictures of electrolytical failing capacitors. If it has some of this liquid on it, you wanna get those replaced. Do not use the DAC. Uh, do not use the amplifier, do not use a component, just replace the capacitor. Wait 48 hours, hire someone, do the soldering yourself. There's other videos online again on this. Do it as your own risk. But as you can see, this is quite spectacular inside of this. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to show. Big, heavy case, very good quality, weight, very important probably more important than anything else, but some of these DACs, some of the Chinese DACs have been known to put a box in here 
distinguish it as a transformer box, but I've heard stories that they contain nothing but weights. Um, so read the reviews when buying these things. Um, see if they fail, see how they fail, see if they can be replaced, see what people think about them, uh, especially when you're on the used market. Uh, after you do your diligent homework, go ahead and buy them. But do a visual inspection like this, look through your capacitor, see that, look through all of the components. If there's any burnt, charred signs, um, if this red is suddenly black in a spot, you will want to test that component with a meter, a multimeter, and possibly other things. Um, don't plug it in, get it checked out. Uh, I can't, I've heard people who have been modifying gear, they plug it in, they use the gear, and then something happens. One of the preamps, the story I heard, someone was modifying their amplifiers to try to make it sound better. And when the preamp turned off, the amplifier was still on. The amplifier sent a high frequency electrical signal to the speakers. The person experienced 160 plus dBs of high frequency audio. And before they were even able to turn them off, uh, they damaged their hearing. Uh, the person said they had ringing in their hear hearing. So if you really am worried about a piece of gear failing, plug it into a, a wound resistor, an 8 ohm wound resistor, or a 4 ohm wound resistor, whatever the amp is, and test, the, test, test it. Make sure it's not sending an electrical signal. Uh, but it does indicate the, the seriousness of doing this. And I tend to look at all of my electronics every single time I move it around. So since I bought a new DAC, I've moved this out of my office. And I'm now giving a visual inspection to make sure it's in working order. That I'm not going to have any problems. This one looks fantastic. I'm very impressed by it. Very happy I bought it. But I wanted to show you guys how I do a visual inspection when buying new audio equipment. And when I'm moving the audio equipment around. There's also tubes. When you're working on tubes, and we'll do that another time. But the tubes can be high frequencies in here, high voltages in here, and you probably shouldn't open them up, even with a ground staff, even with other safety precautions until you wait 48 hours. But the tubes will fail in certain ways, and you can check online to make sure they're not failing. Uh, and I did that on my, uh, I did that on the Wilsonton RA. And that's also in good work in order. So this will be going back to my office or my bedroom. It will be powered up to an NADTHX 216 amplifier. It's about a 20 year amplifier. I just did an inspection on that and it looks great. There's no electrical capacitors. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention. These capacitors have a life, the electrolytical capacitors and the reason why we want to inspect them have a lifespan of approximately 15 to 20 years. This is a lifespan if they are being used. If they've been sitting around, their lifespan drops, their shelf life drops, and you may have problems plugging in old electronics. It may take a while for them to work right. You may have noise when you first plug them in. I have seen the capacitors come back after a period of being sitting around but generally, it's not the best idea to buy electronics that's been sitting for long periods of time. So use your electronics frequently, plug them in, power them up, um, and, and you know, give these things a visual inspection, especially on the vintage and used markets. Uh, anyways, I hope this has been informative. If you guys have any more hints, please share them in my comments. If I've said anything in your accurate, please share it in the comments. And I will update my post description with any corrections and any details. I don't always get these things right, but uh, we do our best. Again, play with your own risk. And subscribe and like my channel. I'm trying to grow this channel. I got a lot of this rare Chinese, all different manufacturers, gears, 
and I really want to show this stuff to you guys. And if I could get more people, I could get a little, I could start earning advertisement dollars on these and buy more gear to show you guys. So not really looking to make a profit on any of this, just trying to show off this stuff that I enjoy and listen to so often. So check out this and check out the upcoming review of this stack on this channel by subscribing. Thank you very much and keep listening.